Dusty Sonnenberg, field leader with Ohio's Country Journal and the Ohio Agnet with your Ohio Field Leader Roadshow. I am with Shane Meyer of Countryside Land Management. And Shane, we've been visiting your operation today, talking about all the different things you guys do and quite an evolution as you've taken this farm from a traditional conventional tillage type operation through the different aspects of strip tillage, cover crops, and now transitioning to organic production. Uh, walk us through that a little bit, uh, sort of the beginnings when you started farming a number of years ago and how that's evolved. Well, started farming, I think I'm fourth generation. So like it's always been in the family, in the blood. Um, but my dad owns a trucking company uh, and I worked for him for many years. So didn't really start farming until I bought my first farm in 2005. Um, with that, with the trucking company, we were so busy, we were hiring out a lot of custom. We were hiring out our combining, um, our deep tillage, you know, stuff like that. Um, we did our own planting. We did what we could with what we could, um, but uh, we, def we grain trucked a lot too. Um, so that was a busy season for us. In 2005, I bought my farm, um, and from there, took till about 2007 I decided that I wanted to have my own combine at least so that that year kind of I took a step off the deep end really um I bought a combine that year or with my father we bought a combine I personally bought a six row strip tiller with no fertilizer um and I wanted RTK which is kind of why I got into strip tilling um I wanted it for the farm I just kind of it, it, it bit me. I, I can't say why I wanted it, but I just liked it. So uh, I always say it's because dad wouldn't let me uh, run the planter. I couldn't drive straight enough, right? So I was like, well, here, now I can drive straight. But that wasn't the real reason. Um, I, I just, uh, I saw it as a future, I think. I don't know. Um, but I wanted it. So I bought a strip tiller to try and help pay for, you know, that in the, the large in input costs that it took for that. So from there, um, everything kind of started progressing with me doing all the custom side, trying to pay for the strip tiller, for the strip tiller, uh, the RTK, I mean, and the strip tiller, uh, the combine. Uh, didn't really do a whole lot of custom. You know, that combine was bought spe specifically for our farm um, and really wasn't uh, too large of an operation to even go out and do more custom. Um, so that was just for ourselves. Oh. Was you evolved then, uh, one thing that you've done recently and, and really tripped out, if you would use those words, is your corn planter. Let's talk about the planter. You've got a lot of interesting things on that machine, sort of to the max, if you will, as far as technology that can be used to get the job done right. Yeah, um, so we started, or up until two years ago, we planted with a John Deere 7000. I think that was four years older than me. And uh, it was a great planner. You know, we outfitted it right. Great bones from the start. We added the precision planting discs, uh, or not discs, uh, finger pickups, um, some other stuff just to keep it up at the times. Um, but we wanted an increase in size. Um, and uh, we just decided to buy a bare bones planter, brand new. And uh, my technology that I've been using on the RTK was Ag Leader. So it was, it, you can't just order from a factory with Ag Leader equipment on it. So we went bare bones and um, we attached all of our Ag Leader components to it. We went with uh, hydraulic downforce, electric meters. We're running the Dawn GFX, which is hydraulically controlled row cleaners on it. Um, no specific reason for that other than faster response time. We have two fields, which isn't much, that go from very hard clay to yellow blow sand where the the uh, glacier stopped, dropped a bunch of sand, and uh, we can dig, you know, boat trenches in a hurry. So I just wanted that quick response with the with the row cleaners. Um, we've got the Yield 360 Bandit for applying 28 two by two by two. We're running the Keaton seed firmers for in-furrow. Um, both of those fertilizer products are in separate tanks. So we got wing tanks for the in-furrow. We've got the center tank for the 28. Both of them are ran electronically, uh, well, the 28 is hydraulically, but they're both able to run prescription if we want them to. Um, along with the electric seed meters, we could run a prescription or we can just change our population on the fly, uh, which I did basically on all of our farms here. We, we've run trials in every field with different populations. Um, on this organic field, 
we're running three different varieties and in each variety we're running three different populations um, just trying to figure out what's you know what is a good population or not um, and then we've got we've changed our closing wheels we went with the twister closing wheels and uh, drag chains on that too uh, in the meter we're running precision planning's e-sets um, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but uh, I don't know, like just with the RTK, uh, I feel like it, it's just intriguing to me. So I don't, didn't want to put this planter together and say in five years, put something, you know, one of these components on and be like, man, I wish I'd have done that five years ago. You know, there's uh, with the hydraulic downforce, that was one that I was really teetering about, but like everybody says it's the one thing that pays the most. Well, we have almost one style of dirt, hard clay, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we've got two fields that combined probably have 20 acres of sand. Um, holy cow, could we see a difference on that this year with emergence? It was almost like to the hour, same going from hard dirt to sand. Um, we played with uh, the hydraulic downforce, high, medium, low. And uh, I'm hoping to see some differences in that kind of stuff because uh, maybe we were just pushing down too hard over all the years or maybe not enough. Um, I, it, this game is changing so frequently to have all the tools in your toolbox to be able just to trial and error little stuff um, to see what works better, what doesn't. Um, I, I, I hope to be farming for many years so this planter should hopefully pay for itself you know over that time just with the added technology let alone being able to trial and error what does work and what doesn't work so. talking again with shane meyer we are at countryside land management in northwest ohio talking about uh, organic soybean production and having the right tools in the toolbox shane thanks for your time thank you